Welcome to Bloomers in the Garden. I'm Len Schroeder. And I'm Julio Zamora. And on today's show, it's our What's Bugging You show. <laughs> that's right. We're going to have a special guest on. That's Ken Kukowski. He is the head of research and development for SBM Life Sciences. We're going to talk about some of the things you're hearing about pollinators and some of you have heard neonicotoids or imidacloprid. We're going to talk about that. But we're also going to talk about some of the things that you'll see in your garden or yard. Um, we are very fortunate to have Ken along with us. He's going to be in our second segment. But our first segment is going to be all about weeds. Wow, weeds. Plenty we'll be, of those. Right? Oh, I'll tell you what. <laughs> we'll talk about it right after this. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call us on the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. And if we use your question on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. 1880 and we'll see you in the garden. Does your garden have planting insurance? It can now with Biotone Starter Plus from Espoma. It's the ultimate starter plant food. The secret is a special blend of natural organic plant food, beneficial microbes, and mycorrhizal fungi. The result? Plants grow faster, roots grow deeper, flowers and vegetables flourish. Best of all, every Espoma product is safe for people, pets, and the planet. Visit espoma.com for a retailer near you. Biotone Starter Plus from Espoma, a natural in the garden since 1929. The first person to survive Alzheimer's disease is out there. They might even be listening to this right now. Maybe they're waiting for the traffic light to change. Maybe they're daydreaming about a trip they've planned with their family. Maybe they're in a toddler seat, strapped in and wondering if they're almost home. That first survivor is out there and they're going to hold on to everything the disease steals away. And the Alzheimer's Association is going to make it happen by funding research, advancing public policy, and spurring scientific breakthroughs. And by providing local support right now to those living with the disease and their caregivers, we're easing the burden for all those facing it until we accomplish our goal. Alzheimer's disease has devastated millions of lives, but that's all going to change when we reach the first survivor. But we won't get there without you. Visit ALZ.org to join the fight. We are back, lad, and let me tell you, all I see to my home is weeds, weeds, weeds. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I, it, with all the rain that we've had, the warm weather, it, it's crazy. The it weeds have gone, crazy. they're crazy, yeah. out of control. Mm -hmm. So, all right, first problem. You have a vegetable garden. What are you going to do about your weeds? Mm -hmm. It's going to be pull them, pull them out. You got to yeah. pull them by the root, though. You can't break them off. If you break them off, they're going to just grow right back. back right. Grow right back. Mm -hmm. um, and again, that's that's you can obviously pull out weeds anywhere. Mm -hmm. You know um, that will get rid of them. But if you snap them off or you break them, mm -hmm. it's not going to work. Not going to work. Nope not going to work and don't say that you're you know oh i don't want to do this <laughs> it's good work isn't it Len? that's right it's yeah. healthy work it's healthy yes it's healthy work mm -hmm. i i actually have to you have to do go it. out and do that yep. get some yep. healthy work done i did it the other day in front of my landscape oh, is horrendous oh my goodness and i have you know what i have uh -uh. i have a big patch of poison ivy oh no okay you know the rule of poison ivy do you know what it is no Leaves of three, let it be. Oh, yes. Right? Leaves of three, yes. A little bit shiny, yes. leaves of three, and you let it be. Let it be. And, and so the only way to get rid of it is, is you do have to spray it. Um, so Bonide has Bonide has a good has. one with a poison ivy and oak spray. Mm -hmm. It contains Trimac. Trimac is the same herbicide that they use in lawns. Oh, they do? Yeah. Wow. Yep. About that? Um, that uh, it's a three-way herbicide, mm -hmm. and it and it's systemic. It works all the way down to the root, wow. and that that's in like a trigger bottle uh -huh. that you can just, just ready to use. Just boom, go boom, out boom. and use it, right. and it will work down and kill it all yep. the way down. Easy. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, you have to make sure that you don't spray it on oh. your ornamentals. Right. You want to avoid that anytime. Sure. Anytime you're using weed killer, you want to just sure. avoid that. Mm -hmm. Right. Sure. Um, now there's a concentrate that can be used too, right? Oh, okay. 
That's uh, BK32. BK32, yeah, very it's nice. It's a brush killer. Yeah, I like that one. Um, yeah. Non-volatile formula, which means that it works on the toughest species of weeds, right. but it doesn't hurt the grass. Oh, that's good. So it, it, and it stays where you put it. Mm-hmm. And think, think about that, though. You're... you're a lot of times you'll put down a weed control right. and it can leach into the soil. Like any of the ones that you see that will kill for a year or will kill, you know, there used to be Extended. some real nasty ones that you, you would just, it would be maybe for uh, stone areas. Right. But if they're in your landscape, you want to avoid them. Avoid that. Mm-hmm. Make sure that, it, that, it, that it's safe. So this one's more concentrate. Correct. Mm-hmm. Correct. It stays within. It, it does, and it, and it uh, again, it, it doesn't t- get taken up by the roots of other plants or surrounding trees or whatever oh, else. That's boy. that's the key. That's a great te- technology there, Holland. Huh, that's right. Wow. And then there's something that uh, we're going to touch on, mm-hmm. um, glycophate. Ooh. That's Roundup. Roundup. Yep. That Roundup. Um, <laughs> this week, mm-hmm. you know, we're. we're we broadcast out of Philadelphia. Yes, we do. Um, I was very happy to see Dr. Mike on Dr. Fox 29 <laughs> affiliate. <laughs> they were that. talking about how they found traces of it in Cheerios. Cheerios, huh? Now, hey, you, you our eat family, that. Uh, oh, we do. We yeah, eat the Honey Nut Cheerios. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> but the point was, is uh-huh. that there was such a trace amount in there. It, it was, yes, they could find it, but it wasn't har- harmful. Okay, yeah. um, I. I Again, uh, it was yeah, the wisdom of Dr. Mike that was basically go. said moderation. You know, sure. it's not, it's not, you know, they, I think they said the jury is still out. <laughs> yes. um, you know, uh, again. You're not eating churros all day long. No, either. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> there was a time, you know. <laughs> there was a time. Uh, but, uh, oh, but in any case, right. it's, um, it was trace amount. It's there, not, it's yeah, not it's something. Not and, and it's. We are benefiting from the production of farms by the advancements that people like like our guests that's coming up sure. have made. Mm-hmm. I mean, you think about it, the, the starvation that has gone mm-hmm. on and the famines and the things, mm-hmm. that a lot of those things are, we were talking about locusts in locusts. the Bible today, right? Know, we, we were talking about that this morning. <laughs> you know, you don't hear about that. You don't, yeah, you don't. hear about that because uh, yeah. I think companies like, like Bonnet and, and take care SMB of are, taking care of, <laughs> That's right. are taking care of those locusts. That's right. That's but wonderful. There's also advancements in organics that have gone a long mm-hmm. way. Mm-hmm. My role in insecticides. Yeah. Go organic if you can. Right. If you can't, mm-hmm. you go. You mm-hmm. have to go. Now, right. okay, weed control. We're still at weed control. There's burnout, right? Burnout, burnout right. is all natural, all natural safe right. around people and pets. Mm-hmm. Um, and then it, it controls actively growing weeds and grasses. Mm-hmm. And it, it it's one of those things that, that works from the top down, but it, it is called burnout. Sometimes you might get some root. Regrowth. Mm-hmm. I mean, I guess those guys at Monad might disagree mm-hmm. with me, but does yeah. another organic is corn gluten as a preventative. Right. Now, corn gluten is saying that's in dog food. Right. I mean, we had a pallet of corn gluten that mm-hmm. was for lawns, mm-hmm. and the darn squirrels they dug into in it there. and yes. ate it. <laughs> they, <laughs> they loved it. Anyway, um, we were not oh. really happy about that. No, we uh, it has to put, be put down early, though, as a preventative. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, you can put that in your in your flower garden oh, yeah. or your vegetable garden, mm-hmm. you know, in, in, as an alternative to preen. Yep. Um, yep. And then there's that weed beater, weed beater. FE, and that FE stands for iron. Iron, yep. That is Concentrate. that's that's the amazing part. Mm-hmm. That iron, right, where it will, it's at a rate that it won't harm your lawn, mm-hmm. but it will control weeds and control mm-hmm. moss. Um, yeah. But it and it works fast. Yeah, you great know, product. In, in hours, yep. low mm-hmm. temperatures. Mm-hmm. That's that's one. Can you concede the next mm-hmm. day? Right. Wow. That's so that's the, some of the things on the forefront. That's right. Some that's of the right. things on the forefront. Now we talked about organics, Len. Uh, you have to be careful too. I mean, you have to read their label. They right? kill things. Yes. Right. They're meant to kill insects. Mm-hmm. They're right. meant to kill other things. So so you got to be you careful can, how you use it. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of time, what you give up is is residual. Right. Um, but Captain Jack's. Mm-hmm. Oh, another good one. Right. Mm-hmm. right. Uh, Captain Jack's is, yeah. is again, a, a long lasting. Uh, Jack's. It, it, will, it has a, a long residual and it has no resistance because it's only from one source it's, and it's right. fairly new. How about that? Good Amazing. Stuff. I'll tell you what. 
Great stuff. We're going to be back in science class right after this message. <laughs> I, we're so excited to have a special guest, Ken Kowalski, from, he, again, he is head, the head, head of research and development. Mm -hmm. And that uh, it's from that comp that they bought Bear Advanced. Oh, how about that? So, you know, Bear, I mean, that. And in how many countries time. are they in? They're in 31 different countries. Wow. That's amazing. It is amazing. Mm -hmm. It is amazing. Big company. Yeah. So yeah. stay tuned. We'll be back with Ken right after this. Are you an organic gardener? Finally, there's a fast working and effective all organic insect control available from Bonide. Bonide Captain Jack's Dead Bug Brew is the answer for all of your garden insect problems. Captain Jack's works two ways, on contact or when the insect feeds. This will ensure that your insect problems are over. Captain Jack's controls all types of insects, including caterpillars, beetles, spider mites, borers, and more. Use it safely on vegetables, flowers, berries, trees, shrubs, and fruit. Get some Captain Jack's dead bug brew today. Go gardening organically with the captain. Bonide's Captain Jack's dead bug brew is available at these fine retailers. Lehigh Valley Home and Garden, Allentown, PA. The Rhodes Garden, North Wales, PA. Mastardi's Nursery, Newtown Square, PA. Bloomers in the Garden is an hour-long gardening radio program that airs to over 6 million residents throughout the Delaware Valley. From Allentown to Wilmington, from the Main Line to the Jersey Shore, Bloomers in the Garden can be heard twice each Saturday morning, first at 8 a.m. on 860 WWDB and again at 9 on 610 a.m. ESPN Radio. Each episode of Bloomers in the Garden will be broadcast on Bloomers' Facebook page and available as a podcast on bloomersinthegarden.com. Bloomers in the Garden is adding sponsors. Share your message to our large, diverse group of listeners. Commercials and segment sponsorships are available at incredibly affordable prices. Let Bloomers in the Garden get your message out to one of the largest and most diverse populations in the country. If you're interested in joining us in the garden, please visit bloomersinthegarden.com or email len at bloomers.com. Spring has sprung and it's time to visit Bloomers Home and Garden Center. Bring us a soil sample and we'll test your soils pH free. Heck, bring us a water sample from your pond too and we'll test that for ammonia and other critical levels. Did you know that Bloomers has a pond department? We have all of the water treatments, fish and plants to keep your pond looking glorious year round. Are you looking for that four-step lawn program? Bloomers carries Scott's, Jonathan Green, Bonide, and Espoma's Organic Step program. Need to seed? Bloomers has its own blend of seed called Township Turf. It's just the right balance of rye, fescue, and bluegrass to give you a spectacular lawn. It's also perfect for repairing bare spots and matches extraordinarily well to sodded lawns. Don't forget the garden. Bloomers carries bumper crop soil amendment and all the fertilizers a garden could need, both organic and inorganic. The best vegetables start as seedlings from Bloomers. Come visit those who know the friendly folks at Bloomers Home and Garden Center. Bloomers is located in Washington Township in Gloucester County, New Jersey, just 20 minutes from Philadelphia. For directions and information, visit www.bloomers.com. That's www.bloomers.com. And we'll see you in the garden. Well, Julia, we're back, yes, we're and, and we are very fortunate to be joined by the head of research and development for SBM Life Sciences, uh, Ken Kukowski. Welcome to Bloomers in the Garden. Thank you very much, Len. Hey, um, it is Pollinators Week. We're, we're at the end of uh, Pollinators Week, and um, there's been a lot of talk about uh, neonicotinoids, and that's imidacloprid for, for some of you people out there that, that know what, where, where are we with that? It, it, it seems that, um, and, and uh, as a, as a retailer and somebody on the front lines that are selling drenches and, and explaining to customers how to use the products. Um, Hey, I, I can't see unless it's transmitted through the pollen, how it is affecting bees. Did you give me some insight? Um, I hope so. Uh, we have studied imidacloprid for 30 or 40 years. Wow. Uh, th that is my, the parent company, Bayer. And, they, and they, have, they have learned that the amount of imidacloprid that transfers through the plant, we, we all know it's a, it's a, it is a 
systemic insecticide that moves through the xylem part of the plant. But the amount that, tra that travels up into the nectar and into the pollen is a minuscule amount compared with the amount that stays in the stems and the leaves. Now, most of the insects that we're trying to control are insects that feed on the leaves, like Japanese beetles, mm -hmm. or I insects that feed in the, in the stems of, of plants or trees, like um, emerald ash borer, the invasive, mm -hmm. or on, on, on uh, leaves like um, uh, hemlock woolly adelgid on hemlock trees. So most of the imidacloprid is in the plant portion and not in the pollen or the nectar and also in the, in the fruit that, that forms from the pollen and nectar in, in, um, in um, m many plants. And we, we, know, we know this from another, another aspect about practical gardening, and that is that when you have a problem with Japanese beetles, Japanese, adult Japanese beetles, and I have this on my roses in, 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 in my house here in North Carolina, Japanese beetles are in the flowers feeding right. on the nectar and pollen, and they're not controlled. But the, uh, the one Japanese beetle that gets fat and dumb and falls off the flower and, and feeds on the leaf and takes a couple bites out of it will die because I've treated it with our, you know, our, our systemic product that is a drench product for controlling diseases and insects on roses. So we, we know that the amount that gets into the nectar and pollen is, is a very, very small amount. And there have been many, many studies, and I, th I think that Bayer has, has told us that there's probably more than a hundred studies that they've that, that they've done according to EPA guidances and submitted it to the EPA and have shown those those very facts. Now that doesn't mean the problem that is happening with pollinators and bees isn't a real problem. No. But it but it but it but it could because the, the problem that we have with pollinators right now is more than just pesticides. It's a problem of at least a half a dozen stress items like poor nutrition for bees, queen failure, uh, pesticides, yes, but parasites like the varroa mite and the diseases. Now, especially the diseases that the varroa mite transmits right. are causing the very big problems that beekeepers are facing across the country. In, in places of the world where we don't have varroa mite, we don't have the bee colony loss problems like we have here in in you know, the United States, um, it's very it, it is very complex. Does is there a distinction? I mean, bees have become our slaves, and, and that the pretty bee, the that beautiful, hum, that, that 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 perfect honey bee that's on your flower that's pollinating it. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about basically they're like slave ships that are, that are going down the highway that are going from farm to farm to pollinate these farms. Now they, I, I can only think that, that the diversity that's within that colony is pretty limited oh. because they're not free range. They're, they're, they're all together all the time. And it's that same colony that, that we always want to get, I guess, new blood into the, into the, that colony, is that happening? Oh, again, again, Len, we could we could spend the whole day talking about about bees and and about apiculture in general. Right. But you're you're exactly you're exactly right. I, when I mentioned number of stress items, um, a very serious stress item for 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 honeybees, especially the hives that are transported around the country. And we're not talking about. The, the you know the gentleman down the road that might have a hive in his backyard that he's had for for many many years. Right. But the hives that are moved. They at one at one point I heard facts that that indicated that 50 percent of all the hives in the in this country are in Southern California in the springtime pollinating mm -hmm. almonds. Wow. For our desire for almonds. And then of course they move. They move to the Pacific Northwest. Sure. They move for for. For uh, fruit pollination, they move to the uh, Great Lakes area for fruit pollination, and eventually they settle in somewhere in North Dakota, South Dakota for for the for the winter. But I recently there, I recently saw a news a news story. It was a, a news broadcast, and it was really about the policeman that had to deal with a tractor trailer of bees that had overturned, yeah. and yeah. all the hives were all over the highway, and uh, how to clean it up. But it just 
you know, it, it's driving next to you on, you know, I-95 may be a tractor trailer that's full of bees, like you said, going to pollinate, you know, whether it's fruit trees or, or down south and as far as in Florida, like oranges and things like that, that they have, I mean, they do work. They do work. And, that, oh, and, and, and the pollination part of, of uh, apiculture is a very big part of American agriculture. Um, yes. We, we expect we expect that we have uh, I know, fruits all throughout the year, and um, it's very important for us to produce here in the United States, and that's, this is part of that production. I mean, when I was, Len, when I was growing up, almond milk never existed. No. <laughs> uh, no. I, I'm, I'm letting on to everybody how old I am. But, <laughs> never existed. but now it's a, it's a serious part of, of uh, what we buy in the grocery and, 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 mm-hmm. our, and our whole American agriculture. And, and bees and as pollinators are a very important part of that. That's right. Mm-hmm. Wow. You know, the organophosphates that we have been spraying for years, um, they were no better for bees. Uh, you hit a bee with those, that bee is not going to survive. Um, it actually, the, the drenches were an alternative and almost a safer alternative to some of the things like, I mean, I'm going to use old names like, like again, orthene. I think orthene still used. And there are some other things that were systemics, but also like seven. I mean, carborol is like deadly to bees. Oh, yeah. Well, you, you know, let's let's talk about sprays before we talk about drenches for a moment. Okay. I hope that your everybody in your in your radio listening audience knows that they should not spray any open flowers with anything um it's 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 very obvious to to all of us that are that are in the business that if you spray an open flower um, the chances of of a pollinator coming to that and getting contaminated with your insecticide are very good so we don't ever want to do that and there's ways of getting around it if you're a good gardener you know the right time of the day you know how to pick pick the flowers off your plants treat treat the plants for for the insecticide when it is needed not on a calendar, but when it is needed only. Right. Uh, these are ways that you can do it. But what we learned with imidacloprid, especially many years ago, was that this systemicity aspect of imidacloprid, that you can make an, a drench application and not have to get out a, a power sprayer and hose down uh, the, uh, the trees in your, in your property to control the insect pests. It is, it is targeting the pests when the pest needs to be targeted where it needs to be targeted and imagine the number the number of parasites and predators that because of the drench application are no longer affected by the treatment right because these predators are not feeding on the leaves they're feeding on the 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 insects or the mites that are on the plant and if they if we've taken care of those insects and mites those predators are going someplace else and they're not affected that's good. That is. That's good. what we want. Wow. Now, how how does now that brings into question? So, if you are, well, I guess that the insects wouldn't be on the plants to begin with, so there wouldn't be anything for the predators to find. Um, but if a predator insect feeds on an insect that has taken in imidacloprid right that's a bad thing and well uh, it's 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 bad and it's not so bad because what is the knockdown what like knockdown time for imidacloprid i mean they feed on it is it is it quick or is it take a long time uh that's that's the key thing that's where it's not so bad because we found and and this is this is going through published research has gone on for many many years not just anything that happened this week uh People have learned that parasites and predators like to like to feed on on live and living and active insects. Right. And so if you're if you're mummified from from a a treatment or if you've fallen off and you're you know if effectively if you're if you're a dead carcass off the plant or even on the plant, the predator or parasite are not interested in that. Now and so yes, there is a time period where an aphid could take in enough imidacloprid, and, uh, and, and the timing could be so that the, the parasite affects that, that aphid at that right timing. So, yes, that could happen. So I'm not going to deny that. 
but most of the time, most of the time, uh, these 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 insects that that feed on the plant and take in the insecticide, control the insecticide, those are not the kind of big game that the predator or the parasite wants. Right, and all of the, the imidacloprid is that you work with is a drench. It's not meant to be sprayed. It is. Is that correct? All, would you, I'm sorry, I didn't quite catch the question. Would you repeat All, it again, please? Sure. Uh, the, the, the product that, that uh, SBM makes yeah. is meant to be used only as a drench and not a spray. Oh, absolutely. In fact, I'm, I'm, I, have to, I have to go back uh, you know, about 10 years ago. When we first came out with our all-in-one for uh, rose and flower control, which was a drench, and also our tree and shrub, uh, which which you use around trees as a drench. We had people calling our hotline saying, "I can't I can't figure out how to spray this product because there's no instructions on here to spray." That's right. And and, and the people on the hotline, you know, the one eight hundred number, it's on every bottle. Have said have said to them repeatedly, "It's not a spray. That's it's right. It's something you mix up, you mix up and you apply at the base of your base of your plant, and you let the you let the tree or the rose move it up through the plant." You know, so the, you will never find on our drench products any instructions whatsoever for spraying. That was just, revolutionary when that when that product came to us as a as a again a, a garden retailer. That it was it is a completely different mindset from what had been out there before, um, and it just it has it's changed. Um, just the way that we can grow things like roses, for instance, woolly adelgid. Woolly adelgid was killing every hemlock there was, but imidacloprid has oh. taken care of that. We've got to take oh, a break. We, we, we'll, um, I'd like you to come back. We're going to talk about, again, not just the things that, that we have now, but we're going to talk about what's in the pipeline and what are some alternatives that your company is working on. We're going to be right back right after this message. Stay tuned for the Bloomers Garden Minute. The Garden Minute is brought to you by Bloomers in the Garden, Philadelphia Garden Radio. Find us on the radio dial or on the web at bloomers.com. This is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden with the Garden Minute. Wow, what a great time to be a gardener. You can plant anything right now. Vegetables, flowers, roses, trees, shrubs, and perennials. The possibilities are endless. No matter what you plant, you need to do these three things to ensure success. One, make sure you're adding soil amendment when you're planting. Bumper crop is our top choice, but even if it's just cow manure or peat moss, you only get one shot at improving the soil right at the root of your plants, so don't pass it up. Two, after planting, apply a granular type fertilizer made specifically for your type of plant. Evergreens, flowers, and vegetables all have specific dietary needs. Don't worry, if you're not sure what to get, your local garden center will help you match the right fertilizer to the right plant. A granular fertilizer will give your new plants a consistent feeding of nutrients. Think of it as three square meals for your plants that you reapply once every four to six weeks. Three, use a water-soluble fertilizer every two weeks. That's the kind you water your plants with. You know the stuff, the kind that tints your water blue. I recommend Jack's Classic, but others are available. Miracle Grow just came out with an organic water soluble fertilizer. When using water soluble fertilizers, they are immediately available to your plants. Think of it as those vitamins you take. It's an extra boost supplementing a regular diet. And for heaven's sake, buy one of those feeders so all you have to do is attach it to your garden hose and go. No mixing, no blue fingers. But remember, those feeders are only calibrated for water soluble fertilizer. They are not calibrated to spray insects or disease control. This is Len Schroeder for the Garden Minute, and we'll see you in the garden. Today's Garden Minute was brought to you by Bloomers in the Garden, Bloomers Home and Garden Center. Also brought to you by VPG, the Fertilome people. Fertilome Succulent Potting Mix with EcoPeat is the perfect ready-to-use potting mix for all your succulents. Fertilome Succulent Potting Mix is a blend of sphagnum peat moss, perlite, and EcoPeat. EcoPeat is a natural wood fiber from peat bogs. When added to Fertilone peat moss, it produces a superior professional substrate with an exceptional ratio of air porosity and water holding capacity. Fertilone succulent potting mix will ensure maximum drainage with ideal water retention. 
It's simply the best succulent mix on the market. Ask for Fertilone by name at your local garden center. Available at Daniel's Garden Center, Sumney Town Pike, Harleysville, Pennsylvania. Gasper's Home and Garden, 316 Tanyard Road, Richboro, PA. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call us on the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. And if we use your question on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. All right, folks, we are back with Ken Kukorowski. He's the head of uh, R&D in North America of SPM Company. Thank you for coming back for us, uh, Ken. Well, you're you know, welcome. Ken, we, we, we dropped off by talking about uh, Wally Adelgid. Um, I grew up in uh, northern New Jersey, and hemlocks were just dying by the dozens. And that they couldn't figure it out, and they they find they found the woolly adelgid. They used every systemic to c- try to control it, and they just couldn't get any good control. Um, now, with that, it was imidacloprid was the answer, and it worked, and it still works, and it's just a great product. But while we were on break, I couldn't help but think that to our listeners out there, and I know that a lot of you are organic gardeners. I want you to understand that. The age that we live in with agriculture is brought by the research that gentlemen like Ken are doing, and that has made us the most productive in the history of the world, and that it's organics are available, but there are some times where you need to use inorganics. And Ken, what I'd like to do is just the research we we quickly talked when we, when we were on uh, a break about um, some of the the weed controls that are now in the news that uh, again there we talked about it that they're they're in my Cheerios they're in you guys are working on an organic version of that is that correct or an organic alternative we we I, I, Len I'll bet you that fifty percent and I'm I'm going off the top of my head right now. But 50% of our total research is on natural products, whether they're insecticides or fungicides or, or um, uh, fertilizers or herbicides. And we expect that in the future that that's going to be closer to 100%. The parent company, SBM, is committed to uh, naturals, and, and in France especially, it's, it's an all-naturals market. And so we are um, doing work on both some synthetic work, but, but more than 50% on all kinds of naturals. Um, we've come out in the market in the last couple of years with a, um, a burned down total vegetation a herbicide called grass and weed with root kill. It burns down, burns down the, the, uh, the weed like our old grass and weed, our natria grass and weed did. But now with, the, with this root kill component, uh, we added something to it that provides a systemicity so that if you have a, a perennial weed, it'll both burn it down and keep it burned down. And so it'll kill the root as well, which again, we've all been accustomed to the, the, the benefit that glyphosate, that Roundup glyphosate has provided for us for, for many years. It's a, it's a good herbicide. Right. Now we have a natural alternative. And those kinds of things are exactly what we're, what we're working on now insecticides, fungicides, herbicides, et cetera. Because I don't want our listeners to misunderstand that, you know, I, I have this vision of uh, Mr. Burns from The Simpsons in that <laughs> the companies that you represent are are conscious of the, more, more conscious of the yeah. environment than, you know, some, some of the other folks that are just saying, you know, don't use this because it's going to hurt the bees. You know, it... You guys are aware of what is going on, and you're you. Are, nobody wants to kill the earth. You know. Right. You know. You, you know, Len. My, my myself and my wife, we go to the same grocery store that everybody else in our neighborhood goes to. We're interested in in uh, safe food, and we're interested in a, a safe area uh, where we live. 
just the same as everybody else. Right. So. Right. It, 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 that's right. Mm -hmm. and, you, and, and, you know, and we can do this. We can do this with the technology that we have. Because uh, the, the, the grass and weed killer that you talked about, I can remember there used to be, and, and again, I've been doing this way too long, <laughs> that I can remember there was a type that you used to use, but it would kill the top. And it was, but it was fatty acid, salts of fatty acid, and it would kill off yeah. the top, and then it would grow right back. But the technology yep. today, you have organics that will suppress that regrowth, correct? Right. Well, you know, also, and this time. is something that a, a, a lot of a lot of customers are surprised to hear about. Uh, we we have a, a selective herbicide you can use on your lawns that will take out broadleaf weeds. Not and, and no, this is this is a this is a, a selective herbicide that's not based on 2,4-Ds or phenoxies, phenoxy herbicides, but but you know a, a completely different natural uh, product that will take out selective weeds, and especially if you're in your north and you have a uh, creeping Charlie, it's yeah. excellent on creeping Charlie, and it's again it's in our you know we have it as our natural product line is called Natria. So you see it in the green bottle and in the green label, and and, yeah. and but we have this selective herbicide, and a lot of people don't know that because they think we just have to use 2,4-Ds for for uh, weed control. 2,4-Ds are very good, but there's alternatives. Right now, everybody out there, 2,4-D, you think of it's step two or it's plus two or it's that second step, that yellow bag. This is a re something that will replace that. That's an organic. Now, are you using, is it an iron that you're using that's making it work? Tell, tell me, give me a little bit of the science behind it. You know, and, 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 and in, some, in some areas, um, for some weeds, and again, we have, we have a research farm in Illinois that works on cool season turf. We have a research farm here in North Carolina that works on transition and warm season turf. But on some weeds, the, um, the Natria uh, lawn weed and disease control works better. Than, than our 2,4-D product <laughs> works faster and more more thorough. Wow, wow. Well, uh, uh, listen, Ken. I'm sorry, but we we're up on a break again. I, I'd like to have you come back uh, for the rest of the show if that's possible. Unfortunately, we we do have to pay the bills, yes, um, <laughs> but uh, we'll be right back right after this. Introducing Miracle Grow's next big thing performance organics. Finally, organics that work. Tested and refined by plant scientists for twice the results. Guaranteed. Don't grow a snack, grow a feast. Don't grow a flower, grow a million dollar view. This new organic collection of soil and plant food is what you've always wanted. No compromise, just results. Guaranteed. Miracle Grow Performance Organics. Is your yard and landscape being destroyed by nuisance animal pests? If so, Bonite has a product to solve that problem. Repelzol is an all-natural repellent that works on deer, rabbits, skunks, squirrels, chipmunks, raccoons, and many other nuisance animals. It stays effective for up to two months. The all-natural ingredients in Repelzol use smell, taste, and irritation to keep animals away. Unlike other repellents, Repelzol has no unpleasant odor. Repels All Natural Formula can be applied to trees, shrubs, perennials, and around edible crops. It also works to prevent animals from chewing on fences and structures. Repels All is so effective that your satisfaction is guaranteed. Repels All is available in a concentrate, ready-to-use, and ready-to-spray liquid formulations, and in an easy-to-use granule in a 3-pound shaker and a 6-pound bag for spreader applications. Bonide products are family-made in America. Look for Repelzol products at these fine stores. Bucks Country Gardens, Doylestown, PA. Shady Brook Farms, Yardley, PA. Delray Plus True Value, New Hope, PA. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call us on the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. And if we use your question on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. All right. Well, we are back. Uh, Ken, the, the discussion that we're having is, is going so fast. 
But <laughs> what types of insecticides, organic insecticides, um, are coming out, and what is their? How do they? I guess how do they work? Is is what I'm trying to get out. Well, right right now, the the, the mainstay in the in the uh, naturals area are going to be blends of uh, exotic oils, uh, eugenol, thyme oil, rosemary oil. <laughs> That's one whole area. Sounds like a and salad then, dressing. <laughs> it does. Right? That, yeah. Well, but they, but they work. Um, but similarly, there's also natural pyrethrum that that that's in that uh, particular market as well. Point said that, that now, those are from chrysanthemum flowers, right? Yes, they, they, that's where the, that's where they derive from. Um, and 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 we too have have uh, a natural pie in some of our natural and uh, our natural products as well. They work very well. Um, we are we are working on uh, an, a way that we can stabilize natural pie so that it will last longer than just a few minutes in the in the outside. You know, natural pie only it, it breaks down for, for UV light very very quickly in the uh, outdoors. Um, and there was a very big breakthrough when I uh, first got into. Now, I'm sorry, I'm going to I'm going in, to interrupt. Natural pie, you mean natural pyrethrin? Yes, I'm sorry. There, yeah. All right, for, for those thank, of you out there, natural pyrethrin made from chrysanthemum. Yeah, I'm, using, which, I'm, using, I'm using shop. I'm that, using that's shop okay. Shop. That's all right. We're, we, we, our job, whether it's here on the radio or at the store, is, you know, we are translators. We, we go and we try to get it so that our customers can speak the same language and understand. So, so okay. um, that – that there, and, and I'm just going to just quick go on to a pyrethroid, which is the same science, but it's a man-made version of right. pyrethrin. Yeah, and, and the big breakthrough with that happened in the 1970s where chemists were able to stabilize natural pyrethrum and allow it to, again, for, in a synthetic product, allow it to stay stable in the environment for two weeks. Which was which was a big deal yeah. because now you could have, now you could have these pyrethroid um, chemicals uh, control a wide variety of, of surface pests uh, on crops especially uh, for for two weeks which was fantastic and and we and we rely on pyrethroids in many of the home and garden insecticides insecticides that SBM sells insecticides that my competitors sell as well right right but, and, but, and and that's the one thing we we've the whole organic movement was great, but the problem is it never had a residual. So if you have multi-generational, like if you have an adult on a plant and you have a, a, a nymph or, or a juvenile on a plant and then you have eggs, you may kill off one generation, but it's like you never did anything unless you're repetitive sprays or you did the science like you're talking about, where it had a residual, where where it hung around for a while, and this is a, you're, you're, what you're describing is especially a problem when you have a constant influx of insect pests on your plants. Yep. So you can take care of what you sprayed, but then two hours later or one day later, the new ones have come in, and and that's that's real. That's that's where having a, uh, an insecticide that has some residual properties, some properties that permit it to stay around for two weeks, like we said, for pyrethroids is very beneficial because you can, you can, you can be controlling pests while you're not there spraying because you've made one, one effective spray earlier. Yeah. That's yeah. Very, that very area that we're talking about is exactly the research that we're working on right now. And we hope to have something to share um, uh, in, in the marketplace within a year or two on, on that. And a lot of companies, not just SBM, are also researching other active ingredients. Now, natural pyrethrum or various pyrethroids are what we call active ingredients. That's the that's the the the, the, the part of the formulation that does the heavy lifting, so to speak, on controlling the insects. We're also looking at other active ingredients that be, will be natural, and will will do the same thing that we're accustomed to. We've been spoiled with with the synthetic insecticides we have. They right. have been very easy to use. Yes. Yes, I not, I can not, I can remember back in the day where um, it seemed like and, and I'm your technology is exclusive to your company, um, but will you share that technology 
um, and license it so that others can put it in their packaging. Do you, do you follow me there? Because um, I can remember back in the day when it was, how many ways can you package seven? There was, everybody had it, and it, they called it a different thing. Or di, do you remember diazinon? Oh, my gosh, it was in everything. But where oh, yeah. we, I'm hoping that what we can do is 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 make sure that it, it's widely available because there are some places where, you know, that, that are small mom-and-pop shops that are around these days and garden centers have been hit pretty hard that, you know, we want to be able to have cutting-edge technology but don't want to be excluded. Well, a- actually, companies, the, 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 the first objective of companies is to patent something so that you can own it yourself right. exclusively. I'm not going to deny that. And, and we, too, uh, do that as well because you put a lot of money into research and you want to you want to uh, get it all back sure but a lot of a lot of research is combinations of different products that are that are clever and unique and and those are situations where companies come out with a product and they really have a head start on the competition because the competition can copy it if it's not patented and you get a head start for one year two years three years before others copy it and get into the marketplace as well right and we see that as well. That goes on. And sometimes having a two-year head start with your particular brand and getting loyalty from customers is very important. It is. It, it absolutely it, – and competitiveness. We – all of the independent garden centers that I know and uh, nurseries that, that are, again, selling to the public, they want people to understand. They just don't want to put something on the shelf. So they want to have the understanding of how the product works and, and how it, it's safe for their grandchildren, not just, here, this is something for bugs, you know? You know? And and the, the exciting part is that where you guys are doing that with that in mind, and that's to me that's thrilling because yeah. before it was just killing the bug. That was all that mattered. Mm-hmm. But now uh, it is all about the environment, and it is also, in, you know, for the environment for the next generation as well. You're exactly correct, and we're and we're committed to that. It's fantastic. And and, and also and also you know that if, if you find yourself having questions on a mode of action of, of an insecticide or a, or a, a herbicide, you you know our salesperson in in, in Pennsylvania. Yep. He knows how to get a hold of me. Um, we will get you an answer. Yep. As soon as we can. I tell you what, he answers my phone call. I love that. Yeah, he did. <laughs> <laughs> that's, uh, that's another topic. Yeah. <laughs> well, unfortunately, we have to take another break, and then we'll be back again right after this. Flowers are beautiful things. Flowers are for anniversaries, proms, saying I love you. But flowers become even more beautiful when they're carried by people who are committed to ending Alzheimer's, a disease that currently cannot be prevented, cured, or even slowed. At the Alzheimer's Association Walk to End Alzheimer's, hundreds of thousands of people across the country walk carrying blue, yellow, orange, and purple flowers, signifying their connections to the disease. And we walk so that one day there will be a white flower for Alzheimer's first survivor, which will be the most beautiful day of all. So join us for Walk to End Alzheimer's, the world's largest fundraiser to fight the disease. The money we raise provides care and support for all those affected and advances research toward an eventual cure. Together, we can end Alzheimer's. Register today at alz.org walk. Tired of pale green, weedy results from four-step lawn programs? That's because they don't do anything for the soil. The New American Lawn four-step program feeds the lawn and the soil. MagiCal Plus, a unique soil food that adjusts soil pH, loosens hard soil, and feeds soil microbes is the key difference. Without the right soil conditions, you'll never enjoy a great lawn. Competitive programs simply don't match up. So feed your lawn and your soil with the new American Lawn 4-Step Program by Jonathan Green. Jonathan Green products can be found at these fine stores. Action Hardware, Wilmington, Delaware. 
Hokesson Hardware, Hokesson Delaware, Gaspers Garden Center, Richboro, Pennsylvania. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call us on the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. And if we use your question on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. All right, so we're back with Ken Kukorowski from the, he is the head of research and development for SBM Life Sciences. Um, They are the company that purchased Bear Advance, the home and garden division of Bear Chemical. What what were they? They were, I guess, a chemical company. Um, So Ken, we were talking about all of the the research that's going in towards organics. I guess in your career, you've been doing this a long time, of the new products that are going to market today, what would you say is the most impressive to you as a scientist? Wow. (laughs) Loaded that one. I didn't even have it written down. (laughs) Tough one because I've worked on some very good I've worked on some very good projects. And I and I, I will admit to you that I was not working on imidacloprid when it first came along, because I got to believe the people that were working on imidacloprid will sit back and say, you know, that was an oh, wow kind of chemical that came along. Yes. Um, we, we, have, we have come up with some, with some combination products, um, and, there, and, and it's not as, as, as glorified as coming up with a new active ingredient, but we've come up with some combination products that have been very, very useful for uh, home and gardeners, uh, such as our complete insect control for soil and turf, which is a mixture of imidacloprid and a pyrethroid, a beta Yep. so that now, now the homeowner can spray their yard, and about now is a, is a good time to do it, and, yep. it will, and the, the imidacloprid will control the grubs, and the pyrethroid will control the surface pests. And, it, you, you know, one, one application, you're going to control grubs, and you won't have a problem. But what I really like about this is that a lot of other research has caught up, and I'll, I'll especially call out some research that was done at the University of Kentucky by the uh, turf entomologist there, and he showed that if you make an application of a neonic like a midacloprid to to um, uh, uh, to turf, and you don't have weeds flowering in the turf, even when the weeds flower a week later or two weeks later, you don't have a problem with hurting any of the bumblebees that are on those on those plants so say and, it's and clover this, there's no there's no yes. there's no evidence of it in that clover yeah and wow. so it's, it's a it may very well be as simple as of course if you wanted to get a, a nice a nice lawn with no clover in it you can <laughs> you can use a herbicide to control it you can also cut the grass right cut the grass <laughs> cut the flowers make your application for grub control and there will be, I, I think, I, I think that, that uh, the research showed that 94% um, of the, of the uh, uh, bumblebees, and he, he was doing the research with bumblebees, not with honeybees, right. but the bumblebees were unaffected by the, um, the imidacloprid that was made on the, on the lawn for, for grub control. Huh. So what I liked is the fact that there's other people that are taking the tools and finding out ways to use these tools to be a benefit for all of us. Use it correctly, and and you'll be able, be able to keep a tool for a long time to help you. Right. You know, that particular product that you you mentioned, I agree that that is, t- to me, as a horticulturist, everybody was all, it's all about grubs, it's all about grubs, but the issue is chinch bugs to me because everybody ignores yeah. them. And that were right. that two-step pro, pro it, it, it was it was a beautiful thing. It was a little more expensive. And as a retailer, you know, I had to convince people it's like, it's cost a little more, but you're getting control one time, one time, one application yeah. and you're done. And it's, and it's a great product, great product. And, and Lynn, I, I mean, I, I like it. I use it on my yard because what's my time worth? I just want to make one application at the right time and be done with it. I mean, I don't, I don't, I, don't, I do not spend all my Saturday 
spraying weeds and spraying insects. I've got other things I want to do. <laughs> Despite what you think, Julio, not everybody wants to spend their day in their yard. You know? <laughs> Sorry about that, Lang. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and I and I won't and I won't deny. Also, I get a lot of satisfaction out of pulling weeds and watching there them go. die. Uh, there you go. That was our first segment that we That's were talking right. about pulling weeds. Pulling weeds. Yeah. <laughs> the health <laughs> benefits to pulling weeds. That's right. Beautiful. <laughs> well. Now, I, t- I tell you what, it, it is uh, been a great uh, visit oh, wow. with you, and I Thank you. totally Thank appreciate you. all that that you have enlightened us on. And it was a uh, it was put together pretty quick. Uh, we'd love to have <laughs> you on again. Would you be willing to come on uh, in a few weeks, and and we'll we'll get this to a I guess a sharper point. I will I will gladly help you out. Terrific, you. terrific. Um, I think that the science part, Julio and I are always talking about the science of horticulture, the science that's behind everything from plant introductions to, to new type of insecticides, herbicides, and fungicides, that it's, it, it needs to be understood and appreciated by the average homeowner, that it's not just you know some big conglomerate trying to put things out there, that there's actually research and all of the work that you do. I mean, permit... I appreciate your job, and I appreciate the hard work that you've put in, and I want to thank you for it on air. Thank you very much. It's nice to hear that. Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, well, listen, keep up the good work. Yep. And that, listen, I'll be in touch, and that we'll have you on, yep. and we'll make sure that we announce it uh, when you're going to be on in a couple of weeks. There you go. All okay, right, Ken. Best thank best you. Wish, thank you, and, Ken. And wish, go ahead. Best wishes to all your radio listeners. Oh, thank you. Thank you. All right. Again, that was... Ken Kuko asked from, he is the head of R&D, SBM, Life Sciences, and wow. fascinating gentleman. He is if wonderful. you want to know, yes. get That's on it. the phone. Yes, <laughs> Give sir. us a call. Give us a call. If you want to yes. know, yes. I'll get your questions yes. directly to Ken. Um, it's so exciting, isn't it? Again, nice. thank you for joining us uh, here in the garden. See you in the garden. Bloomers in the Garden is an hour-long gardening radio program that airs to over 6 million residents throughout the Delaware Valley. From Allentown to Wilmington, from the Main Line to the Jersey Shore, Bloomers in the Garden can be heard twice each Saturday morning, first at 8 a.m. on 860 WWDB and again at 9 on 610 a.m. ESPN Radio. Each episode of Bloomers in the Garden will be broadcast on Bloomers' Facebook page and available as a podcast on bloomersinthegarden.com. Bloomers in the Garden is adding sponsors. Share your message to our large, diverse group of listeners. Commercials and segment sponsorships are available at incredibly affordable prices. Let Bloomers in the Garden get your message out to one of the largest and most diverse populations in the country. If you're interested in joining us in the garden, please visit bloomersinthegarden.com or email len at bloomers.com.